evaluation of impact of of impact on EPS an evaluation of impact on EP, EPS now we start with proposal 1 proposal 1 now in this proposal we have two companies we have X which is the predator we have the second one Y which is the target now these are the two companies now we need to get the EPS before acquisition the EPS before acquisition clear from the question and what we have used in our computation is that in X it's four shillings in Y it's 2.25 shillings that is the EPS then we have the EPS after acquisition in our last lesson we mentioned that the post acquisition EPS for the company is the same as or is used to represent what the shareholders in the predator will get so in our first proposal the EPS is four shillings this one but that which will go to the target shareholders it is based on the exchange ratio and the exchange ratio is 2.25 out of 4 multiplied by the post acquisition EPS for the company and this will give us 2.25 shillings so when you compare the two the EPS before the acquisition for the two companies against EPS after the acquisition for the two companies you find that the change in the two companies it was four before it is four after there is no change the EPS was 2.25 before it is 2.25 after there is no change we say that when the EPS is used to set the exchange ratio there is no dilution in EPS to the shareholders for the two companies that one we can confirm in this computation now let us see in proposal number two we need to determine what the impact is on the shareholders EPS bo both before the merger and after the acquisition the exchange ratio in the second proposal we are told that it is based on 0 0.5 share from X for everyone share in Y so let us look at proposal 2 proposal 2 now in this proposal let's get our companies X which is the predator and Y which is the target Y is the target X is the predator we see that the earnings per share before merger and acquisition this remains for this is 2.25 then we have the EPS after the acquisition after the acquisition we computed the EPS under proposal 2 as 4.125 so this is 4.125 the exchange ratio is 1 out of 2 and we have 4.125 so for this firm y we'll say that it is 1 out of 2 times 4.125 so what is the eps to the shareholders in the target that is comparable with what they were getting before the merger this is 1.25 that is 1 out of 2 multiplied by 0 0.5 times 4.125 4.125 this is equal to 2 shillings point zero six two 
five. The EPS after the acquisition for the predator is 4.125, which is greater than the EPS before the merger or the acquisition. The EPS of the target after the acquisition is 2.0625, which is less than the EPS before this acquisition. So what is the difference? And we call it the change on EPS. So this one is 0 0.125. The EPS to the shareholders in the predator increased by 0 0.125. So to these shareholders, it is a gain. The EPS increased. The shareholders in the predator would want this deal to go through because the EPS will increase. When it comes to the target, 2.25 minus 2.0625, the difference is 0 0.1875. A shareholder in Y, which is the target, will have the earnings per share decrease from 2.25 to 2.0625. Those shareholders, assuming all the other factors are held constant, it is not a good deal for them. So we can say that they lost. This is loss to the shareholders in the target, but to the shareholders in the predator, it is a gain. It is a dilutive decision to the shareholders in Y. In the first option, it is a non dilutive to the two company shareholders because there is no change in the EPS. I believe to this end, and the match that you have covered for the earnings, uh, for the merger and acquisition, you now clearly understand what it means with an exchange ratio, a non dilutive exchange ratio, a post acquisition EPS. And again, how to compare the EPS for the shareholders in both Predator and the target before the acquisition and after the acquisition. And that is what I wanted to demonstrate in this question. So for now, we shall stop there. When we meet next time, we will continue with the topic merger and acquisition. And I know we will understand as we continue with this topic. We stop there for now. I wish you all the best as you continue with your, with your revision.